Padres when we did this, that he believed Duke wasn't necessarily in favor of the war, but once we were in it, he wanted to win it. And we'd like to have your thoughts on his attitude about this. Well, I think, well, a number of us had that, uh, that same feeling. And uh, I think that what Duke felt was what I felt at the time, and that is the great immorality of the Vietnam War was for our government to be asking young men to give up their lives in that war when the government had no intention of winning it because they were afraid of what might follow that might be worse if uh, we tried to win that particular war. And uh, as I say, I think that was the great immorality. I think Duke felt the same. When he made the Green Berets, there was something more going on in Hollywood at that time than just whether people uh, weren't in favor of the war. I remember that uh, we'd call the theater, when the picture first opened, it opened to uh, reserve seats, like a, a play would be. And uh, Nancy and I couldn't get tickets to it. And we'd call the box office and say, has anyone turned in their tickets or anything that we could, and we couldn't. And uh, finally, uh, we called someone else that was supposed to be in charge of the tickets and found out that uh, there were tickets for any night you wanted them. But uh, you were being told at the box office that there weren't any tickets available. In other words, the people who were supposed to be promoting the attendance of that picture were literally keeping people away. And uh, I called Duke and told him, and uh, I think some John Wayne action took place rather quickly about that. Was the opening, opening successful? Because I, I haven't uh, researched that yet. Do you recall? Was it? I can't remember now what the outcome was or when. Uh, I think, oh, I think it did fine once that it was past that period and then available in theaters without reserved seats. Both you and Duke wore the same POW bracelet, Steve Hansen's, for a long time, but even on, on camera, I noticed. And uh, um, Apparently, it has special meaning to him because uh, Steve had sent his wife a picture in combat gear, the typical inscription, you know, me as John Wayne, which has become a, an Americanism. Um, could you comment on that story and your feelings about Steve Hansen? Well, just that uh, I thought you might be asking about it. That's my Larry Stevens bracelet. But I did, I have to say, I did wear more than this. I had several that I felt that I had to kind of change off on because uh, there was another naval officer that was shot down that was, uh, it was his widow. She didn't know he was shot down. She thought he was missing in action. Not this one's wife, but uh, this other one that back in the very beginning of the families coming together to form an organization about this, and uh, this was a Mrs. Hansen, and uh, she came to, when I was governor, there was a meeting in the uh, cabinet room there, and she was talking, and I'll remember that particular story for a long time, because at midway in the meeting, I felt something tugging at my pant leg, and I looked down, and it was a little three-year-old boy who, when I looked down at him, said, will you bring my daddy home? Well, then a naval officer returned who was able to tell her that he was not missing an action. He was dead, as was Larry Stevens. And uh, they are now married. They subsequently married. This officer who came home. And uh, Todd, the little three-year-old boy, is now a naval officer himself. Went to Annapolis and all. But uh, yes, Duke felt very strongly about things like that. And uh, I didn't know as much as evidently he knew about the, the Larry Stevens case. But as I say, I had several of these from family members, and I, I used to try to get in some fair wearing of all of them. Let's say um, we found some old news footage from Andy Devine introduced you at a political party that you and Duke both attended. And the footage doesn't begin uh, at the right place. And the only part we found, we don't really know what Devine said, but when it was your turn to speak, the first thing you said, you stood up and said, well, I'd vote for Duke, too. So Devine must have said something. I don't know if you recall that or not, but everybody yeah. laughed. They got yeah. a great laugh out yeah. of that. I can't recall that, but uh, it was true that, uh, believe me, that Duke Wayne was very often at political gatherings and so forth and uh, most supportive of, 
of me, and I was very grateful to him for it. And uh, he was typical John Wayne when, uh, when things happened, uh, 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 for or against. I remember, however, a meeting, and this was before politics for me, but back when I was president of the Screen Actors Guild. And this was at a time when there was a great communist infiltration of the motion picture industry. I don't think very many people are aware of this, that, uh, that it really was, and it wasn't just something that a few of us dreamed up. Uh, the FBI was very much involved in it, and there was no question but that on orders from the Kremlin, it was to try and get control of the product of the motion picture industry, because at that time, Hollywood pictures took about 90% of the playing time of all the screens of the world. And Stalin had publicly stated what a, this was the greatest medium for propaganda possible. And I remember one night at a Screen Actors Guild meeting, and I had been tipped off by the agency that um, how they operated to control meetings and to keep them going to the late hours until people would begin leaving. And then they knew their own count and uh, when they were then in the majority, enough people left, then they would start passing the motions that they wanted. So I was made aware of that. And, uh, you know, you and I, if we were going to control a meeting, we'd go in a body and sit together. No, they scattered. So that every time the floor was released and I was chairing the meeting, their hands went up, all of them, so that no matter who you pointed to, you had a 90% chance of catching one of them. Well, being aware of this, and when it started, the thing about that, when the legitimate business was over, uh, one of our people did what I had proposed doing, and that is uh, made, a, made an emotion for adjournment. And uh, there was a second of the motion, and I called out in the audience, and I said a motion to adjourn is always acceptable. They started yelling point of order point of order. Well, their point of order was that, uh, that the second was just an anonymous voice from out in the audience, and how could I claim that this had been moved and seconded and so forth? I hadn't. And I just looked out of the audience, and I saw Duke Wayne sitting out there. And I said, well, not at all anonymous. I said, Duke, that was you, wasn't it, that seconded the motion? And Duke says, of course it was me. <laughs> you could count on him. At a press conference after um, uh, his death, you told the story about attending a, in a gathering with Jimmy Stewart, who um, you know, had just lost his, his uh, stepson, I believe it was. And Duke saw to it that a war protester who was waving a Viet Cong flag was stopped. I mean, out of deference to Jimmy Stewart. Do you recall that? I mean, he was. Yeah, I can't remember exactly what he did about it, whether he ousted the person. I would settle that that's probably what he did. But anyway, uh, suddenly there was no longer any demonstration or interference with the meeting. He had that power, didn't he? I mean, he made his presence yes. felt. Yes, He was Should... a solid citizen. Would you ask, um, uh, answer one last one, please, sir. And as he made an effective speech in 68 in the Republican convention, commenting on his hopes and dreams of his small daughter and could you comment on your reaction to that or the crowd's reaction, on his dreams for this country? And his... No, this one, I don't know whether I was not present at that particular session because I, I wasn't at all of them, and or not. And but I I was not present when he spoke, so I I can't okay. can't comment on that. I'm sorry to say, but would I you like know. to may I ask your your comments? Any comments you'd like to give um, to close out? That we're doing this documentary is for public television on John Wayne, called an American hero, I might add. Uh, so any last uh, closing comments you'd like to make for us about the man? Well, there's one thing that I think shows the character of that man as well as anything. There was a strike while I was president of the Screen Actors Guild. It was the first strike, the only strike the actors had ever taken. And I was getting quite a lot of abuse in the, uh, the, in the media and the press over this and so forth. And at that time, I was not well acquainted with, with John Wayne. You know, when you were at different studios, uh, you knew about each other, but you didn't run into them as often as you might. And uh, so I didn't know him well at all. And uh, in the mornings, for seven months, 
I was out of that house to meetings that we were getting, trying to get this thing settled and all. And uh, Nancy would be there with the morning papers and sometimes they were worse than others. And I came home one day and Nancy told me that she'd had a phone call that morning after I left. And it was John Wayne. And John also was reading the papers and John, she'd never met him. And John said, I just thought you might want to hear a friendly voice uh, about this time and then told her how supportive he was and so forth of what I was doing. And he did that every morning when the press was hostile. She could count on a call from John Wayne just to, to cheer her up. And uh, shortly after he had started that, another man who was a good friend of ours, Jimmy Cagney. So she had two boyfriends calling her every morning after, <laughs> after I left. And it was typical of him. He was a uh, and I remember in campaigning and so forth, uh, and press con questions directed to him and regarding the campaign that he was as strong as anyone could be. He really has come to epitomize that American uh, hero in a right, true sense of that word, hero. Uh, yes, it was deservedly so. Thank you, sir. Thank you.